in the power of storytelling. Through stories, we are able to glimpse into the hearts, minds, and souls of other human beings. And sometimes, if we listen closely and the story resonates in our hearts, we can learn to appreciate one another on a much deeper level. A meaningful story told well will captivate us and reveal what is possible in the world. What I'm about to tell you is a true story that allowed me to discover the yearnings of two men who live on the other side of the world. The insight I gained served to propel me forward along a challenging path. It inspired me. It confirmed that my wildest hopes were perhaps not as outlandish as I originally thought they might be. The story begins in Israel. The seven of us make the three-hour drive from Jerusalem to Elot with relative ease. But now, as we approach the border crossing into Jordan, my heart begins to race. As a Jewish woman about to travel to an Arab country for the very first time, I admit I'm a little apprehensive. I am comforted that Nahad is with us. Nahad is an articulate attorney, fluent in Hebrew, Arabic, and English. He and his family are Israeli Arabs, and they live inside the borders of Israel. They are Sunni Muslims, and they have become our newfound Palestinian friends. We met them because of our family support of the hand-in-hand -hand schools in Israel. These four remarkable schools exist to educate Israeli Arab and Jewish children together to build a strong and inclusive society, and to sow the seeds of peace for generations to come. Nahad and his wife, and their two children, who both attend the Jerusalem Hand in Hand School, along with me, my husband, and our daughter, pull our suitcases out of the car and walk to the Israeli checkpoint. After just a few minutes of questioning, all of us are waved through, and together we walk towards the Jordanian side of the Wadi Araba border crossing. The sun is setting, and in dim light, we drag our suitcases behind us and walk under the soaring steel security tower that casts its shadow across the gravelly no man's land between the two countries. We walk for about five minutes, and then, upon entering the customs hut in Jordan, our suitcases are x-rayed. Everyone in our atypical party is allowed to enter, but my suitcase is pulled for further inspection. I am alone with the two heavily armed and uniformed guards who begin to rifle through my luggage. They examine my purse, my jewelry pouch, and then they discover my vitamins. One holds up a plastic Ziploc baggie full of immune-enhancing white capsules. He gives me an inquiring look and begins to question me rapidly in Arabic. Visions of years spent languishing in a Jordanian prison on drug charges loom in my consciousness. What am I going to do? Nahad. Nahad! I call, hoping he hears me. Nahad! Yes, thank goodness. In an instant, he returns to the custom hut and assesses the situation. He smiles and begins to explain to the guards on my behalf in Arabic. She's American. That's why she has so many vitamins. <laughs> but the interrogation continues. I shoot a questioning glance at my dear friends, and he replies in a measured voice. Julie, this is not the hand-in-hand -hand school anymore. This is the real world, and in the real world, Arab families and Jewish families do not travel together. Nahad, tell them about how we met. Tell them about the hand-in-hand -hand schools, I urge. 
So he describes our thriving schools to these Jordanian border crossing guards who are extremely suspicious of a vitamin-toting American Jewish woman traveling with her Arab friends. But they listen to his description of our success at coexistence and how Arab and Jewish families do actually work and play together. He tells them how all the children learn Hebrew and Arabic from their very first day of kindergarten, and how the schools foster an environment that teaches conflict resolution and are a model for peace building and equality. Finally, after what seems like an eternity, one of the guards takes my plastic bag full of capsules and carefully places it back in my suitcase and zips it up tight. And then the guards do something I could never have anticipated. They take off their guns, off their shoulders, the semi-automatic kind, and they remove their ammunition belts that are full of bullets that they wore, that they're wearing across their upper body. And then they bow, thanking me profusely. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, hand in hand. And in that moment, I knew, without a doubt, that it's not just Israeli citizens and Jews throughout the world who yearn for peace in the Middle East. Meeting my Jordanian border crossing guards revealed to me that living in a peaceful world is indeed one of humanity's greatest desires. Thank you.